Hello everyone, it's Lottie from Cancer is a Lifestyle. So today I wanted to do the 20 question tag. So question one, two, and three, I'm going to answer at one time, okay? Because question one is, what does your name mean? And question two, where are you from? And question three, where were you born? So all three are connected because my name Lottie actually is an English version of a name that I was christened with. I was born in Poland, so when we came here to this country when I was seven years old, uh, my name got changed. Um, I shouldn't say changed, it got Americanized. So I was born with the name Władysława. <laughs> that is that for a mouthful, right? And that's what's on my birth certificate. But when we came here at that time, now, mind you, I'm going to be almost 55. I was seven. So you're talking about like almost 48 years ago. They would um, Americanize names of immigrants. So my parents' names got changed. I mean, not changed, but Americanized, right? And my name went from Vladislava into the American version of Lottie. Now, where did they get that from? I have no idea because um, I have no idea. They were calling me Lonnie from the day I, I started school here when I was seven years old. And, um, and that's what I've been called ever since. Now, I have run into another woman that I work with that is also Polish and is called Lottie. And her name in Polish is Władysława. So there's got to be some kind of a truth in it, right? But... Um, but my name, actually, Lottie, in English, is another form of Charlotte. And that is, I think it means tiny and feminine. I think that's what the name means. But, um, and which is kind of makes me, I don't know, because of Charlotte is the feminine version of Charles, right? I don't know. But yet my father's name was Walter. I don't know. But that's how my name came to be. So I was always, uh, when I was in school, I had this weird name, Lottie, because I didn't know any other Lottie. And I went to school with girls that were like Ann and Linda and Susan. And I wanted to be an Ann, Linda, or Susan. <laughs> and, and I was a Lottie. So I always felt like left out. I felt weird. I didn't like my name until I became an adult. How's that? And nowadays, my name is like fits in. Everybody's got all these different names and nobody has, you know, nobody names their child Linda or Susan or Anne. <laughs> they name them like, you know, Diamond and, and um, Destiny <laughs> and Lottie. <laughs> so that's how my name came to be. So number four, what would your parents have named you if you had been a boy? Well, that is very easy because my name in Polish, which is Władysław, is a very masculine name, and I am a junior. My father's name was Władysław, and I was a Władysława. You see? <laughs> so I am actually, I probably would have been the male version of, and I would have, they would have called me Władysław instead of Władysława. So I have a very, very masculine name. And even in now in Poland, my name is not, it, it's so old, uh, from like the old, old, um, that, you know, there are very hardly, you will find uh, a, a girl named, you know, ha that has my name, actually. Number five, what is your biggest accomplishment? Well, my biggest accomplishment, and I know that everybody, I've been watching these tags that everyone, you know, names their children and all, and of course, they are a huge uh, accomplishment. But for me, I'm going to say something different. And it doesn't mean that I don't think that my children are a great accomplishment because they are. But for me, I'm going to have to say when I started, uh, when I started to drive, I did not drive a car until I was 35 years old. I have always been afraid of things. And I was always afraid to, uh, to drive. And uh, I've had multiple reasons. Um, I mean, multiple times for people to teach me for free and everything and I would always like chicken out and I'd be scared and petrified and one day I just made up my mind and I called a instructor I went to a school uh, and I had an um, instructor that would come and uh, he'd take me out 
and I went and I got my license and everybody was like they could not believe that I was driving a car I have always been a late bloomer when it comes to certain things because I've always been afraid of things especially if uh, if um, you know if I had to do something on my own or by myself I've always felt like I don't know like fear has held me back uh, a lot in my life so when I learned to drive that was a huge accomplishment because it opened up uh, the door of freedom and from that point on it's like I kind of changed and I was able to go I traveled to other states on my own I've done a lot of things since then I would take the plunge it's kind of like uh, almost broke my little fear of things so that's my huge accomplishment is to uh, that I stepped out on my own and learned to drive and then let's see number six what is your eye color my eye color is actually hazel but my parents were put down on my birth certificate and on all my documents that my eyes are blue but I am actually um, a split between a blue and a green and it kind of depends and I would call it hazel that's what everybody tells me your eyes are hazel but on all my documents my eyes say blue but I think it depends more on what I am wearing and I think I lean towards blue more than green so number seven what is your favorite candle scent well I actually um, we used to burn candles all the time and we would uh, try different different kinds but we are um, we are lovers of the Yankee candle and once we discovered the Yankee candle uh, it's like nothing else compares and uh, we actually tried different ones of the, of the Yankee candle and right now I think it's called midnight summer I think something like that it's the really dark uh, navy blue color but it uh, holds the scent a lot longer and it burns a lot longer than the other ones so that's our favorite scent in the candle and number eight can you cook well yeah I can cook but I do not consider myself a fantastic cook I consider myself more of what I call a pantry cook <laughs> I <laughs> I can put things together I am probably better at uh, leftovers or like opening up your pantry and like what can I make with this and uh, you know something quick and fast I am not a fantastic cook like um, you know like my daughter for instance is a fantastic cook she has a way with seasonings and I mean everything she makes it just comes out delicious I am not like that I am NOT a gourmet cook I am a basic cook number nine what what is good about your life right now well I what is good about my life I love being a parent of grown children I feel like I have more freedom uh, I feel I am uh, because they are grown I don't have the problems that you know usually you are faced when you have children uh, there's always some situation that you have to diffuse or, or, or you know or something that they're going through and I find that also finances are much easier when the children are grown it seems like you're not no longer uh, struggling paycheck to paycheck like you were so I really like that part of my life where I feel like um, I can basically I'm free to do a lot of things that I wanted to do uh, and not that I didn't enjoy having children I, I found that I really love being a parent and love having children but I also love being a parent of grown children <laughs> and let's see number 10 what is your sign well it's a funny thing because when I was younger uh, I was all up into astrology my sign is Capricorn but I am no longer and so I don't go by signs I don't go you know I don't read the horoscopes I don't do any of that um, but I, I guess you would call me a Capricorn number 11 what scares you about aging well this is very easy because I have a huge fear of Alzheimer's or dementia I I think I fear that so much more and here I have cancer chronic cancer but yet it's not the cancer that scares me but the Alzheimer's does and I think because there are moments that I you know I feel like I forget things or I can't remember people's names or something and I'm always like panicking that I, I do not want to lose control 
of you know uh, my memory I think that's a terrible terrible disease I think uh, I you know I have a fear that I'll be outside somewhere and I'm gonna you know get lost or not know how to get home or recognize people that's terrible I think Alzheimer's and dementia is a terrible terrible disease number 13 what is your guilty pleasure um, my guilty pleasure are actually chips I am a chipaholic I like Pringles and actually anything kind of a junk food junkie and but because I do not eat that so um, if I get a, a bag of chips or something I will eat it all in one sitting that's just how I am I love chips I like anything with potatoes or anything um, but I don't eat that I don't have that at home because I know myself uh, and uh, anything junky like um, uh, McDonald's fries or like um, just not too long ago my girlfriend from work uh, bought some bought her lunch from McDonald's and she gave me a chicken McNugget I haven't had a, anything from McDonald's in, since like 2007 and I literally took that little chicken McNugget and I smelled it I inhaled it I like nibbled on it for as long as I could because it was a really a guilty pleasure it really was uh, because I can't eat any of that stuff but that's what it is chips and any kind of junky you know fast food stuff that I can't have and then let's see number 14 what is your favorite sh show to binge watch well I love British and I love murder mysteries so my all-time favorite is anything with by Agatha Christie so there used to be on a PBS channel over here in Chicago that they would do like a 48 hour um, murder mystery marathon and I would just sit there and I and I've seen each one like a hundred times over and I never grow tired of it so <laughs> I actually have it on my Netflix you know where they mail it out to you and I cannot wait to get that from my queue so I can binge watch it again and watch it like I've never seen it before I love that and let's see oh number 15 what is the one thing you can't leave the house with without you can't leave the house with well I'll tell you one thing I have grown um, which is kind of funny because I am not a phone person but I panic when I don't have my phone with me or I don't have my wallet with me and and something uh, with yarn related so these three things uh, I kind of panic and for one I don't use my phone for anything but to make phone calls and all but nowadays you need your phone with you because you can't find the phone anywhere there's no phone boots there's no <laughs> you know so I always have this fear I'm gonna break down or because I used to many times in the past when I was younger when I had junky cars I used to break down all the time so I panic when I don't have my phone and I panic if I forget my wallet because I think I'm going to get pulled over even though <laughs> it's not like I get pulled over you know and, and then I and the third thing I, I've noticed if I don't have anything of yarny with me there's always the time that I don't bring yarn with me that's when I'm like stuck in the car and tra you know or I'm waiting for somebody and I got nothing to do and I wish I brought it with me so these are the three things that I don't want to leave the house without number 16 are you a morning person or a night owl now I have actually done both believe it or not um, I really uh, love I used to get up super early uh, when I was on um, a different shift I used to come home and like you know I love I would love to get up really early in the morning before the Sun even came up and because the house would be quiet and everyone would be sleeping and I could I find that in the mornings I am the most active and I would be able to write like my blog I had all these ideas and I found one thing when it comes to writing if you miss your window of opportunity all your ideas and everything just shuts down I can't do it any other time so when it would come to writing if I didn't do it in the morning you know and lunchtime would come around it'd be gone I wouldn't have any ability or any desire to write or have any ideas coming out so I always find that in the mornings I am the most productive but nighttime is what I do a lot of now 
because I, uh, when I work, I actually come home, you know, it's like 11 o'clock at night, I don't start till the afternoon, so I find that a lot of times, like on the weekends when I'm off, I'm actually staying up, and but I can't do nights as much as I used to, I, uh, stay up as late, um, I find that my legs swell up at night, uh, sitting is hard for me, or being still because I'll get arthritis will kick in, so I'm, it's not comfortable for me to stay up and do work. Although, you know, I can do both, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so seven, 17, what is your favorite uh, genre of movie? Well, I actually love murder mysteries, like I said. I love police dramas. I love anything British, you know, like 1940s or 1950s. I like that kind of type of um so, 18, what is the last thing you bought? Ah, <laughs> last thing I bought, I actually just went a few hours ago, and I had to buy lettuce and, um, and cherry tomatoes. We go through um, salad like crazy here. So, <laughs> I actually ended up buying double amounts this time because I'm tired of going back um, twice a week for to get more heads of lettuce and so I bought two p packages of each this time. I doubled the order. <laughs> um, 19, are you an introvert or extrovert? Well, that is so interesting. Oh man, I don't even know how to add, uh, you know, add that. I find that I can, um, I am an extrovert when it, like I can um, do a video, I can write, I can share things with, uh, openly and honestly because I don't see the people that I'm talking to or that I'm writing to so I can be an extrovert in that that I do not have to um, hide in any way I don't have to be embarrassed I don't see anybody's faces I don't know if you're making any comments I don't see your reaction to me uh, so I have no problem doing it but now when I have to meet someone um, the first time or I'm in a crowd and I don't know anyone it is very hard for me to mingle it is very hard for me to kind of come up and shake people's hands and hi how are you I'm Lottie it's hard for me to do that uh, and I find that I'm not the only one so if I am with someone else that is just as like me and we're both uncomfortable <laughs> there's no conversation this is one reason why I don't like um, uh, the the meet and greets especially like in church I don't go stay afterwards and go for coffee and have meet and greets because I'm just not good at that and in fact I always feel um, I always feel inadequate how's that I always feel like you know um, I'm a very ordinary and simple person and like I feel like especially and I'm a single woman that's another thing and a lot of places where you go, there's always couples or there's always um, people that are more, um, how can I put, uh, fancier than you. And I'm not like that. I am more, I'm very down to earth and I am very simple. I'm very, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to put that. So I have a hard time when I have to face people. But, you know, it's easy for me to do this. I can sit here and talk. I can write because I don't see anyone's faces. So 20, what is your favorite book? You know, I really I thought about this one a lot. I was going to say um, another book entirely, but uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick to my, my very first book, uh, the book that changed my life. How's that? And that's the one I'm going to go by because I actually had three different books I was going to mention. But I'm going to stick with the one that I believe has really changed my life for the better. So when I was going through uh, my cancer the first time back in 2007, I was actually in the hospital in and out for at least like four months straight where I had so many setbacks. And, um, and a family member, an in-law actually brought me a book called 90 Minutes in Heaven and by Don Piper, I believe. And it was this paperback 
and I and I was actually very surprised that I picked it up and read it because it it's a self-help book I never went for self-help books I haven't I've always wrote uh, read fiction I have never really read anything other than that so when I was reading this and it was about uh, a book about someone who was in a pastor who was in a, in a car accident if you're not familiar with it and he died and uh, he went up to heaven for 90 minutes before they brought him back to life but that's not what caught why I love that book so much it's that once they brought him back, he was basically in the hospital for like three years straight where he was in the cast and they really, his body was all mangled and he had to go through this ordeal of getting, it took a long time to get him back to as normal as it, he will ever be. But this whole process changed him. So as I'm in the hospital myself faced with cancer, I am reading this book and it literally brought me to tears um, because there were sections of it even though our situations were different but we basically are faced with the same emotions while we're going through an illness so for some for instance there was a section there where he did finally recover and he ended up with a limp and like going up the stairs or like uh, walking he had to walk with a, a cane he was a young man in his 30s. He had small children. He was unable to ever play ball with them or do a lot of the activities that other young fathers were. And there was a, one scene where he's faced with going up this long flight of stairs and that he, he took a deep sigh like, Lord, I just, I don't even want to, uh, you know, here it's going to take me a good half hour to get up these stairs. It's going to be painful. It's going to be, you know, uh, and I remember many times as I'm going through my illness there were times like that so that book really changed my life because um, ever since from that moment on I became uh, a lot closer uh, I had a real desire to have relationships with people and also with God so it changed my life a lot and um, I've wanted to, I've gone back and read certain parts of the book again um, and um, especially the one part where I have such a hard time accepting the fact that um, like all my weight gain that I've gained and during the, since then and and um, or even in those four months and and like looking at myself and not recognizing who I am that I'd resembled nobody that I remembered I I didn't know who this person was staring back at me and he had a moment like that too when like I said when he was faced with that flight of stairs and I'm never going to be the same again and um, so yeah it's a great book I know it's not true and I will tell you from that moment on from ever since that book that's all I ever want to read are what I call self-help books I just love them to pieces so anyway those are my uh, 20 questions I hope I didn't bore you guys too much but um, thank you so much for uh, watching and I tag everyone in it I'm not going to name any names I am going to be like Gina from Gina loves to craft and I'm going to tag everyone and I hope you all join in on this tag because I think it's great to get to know each other a little bit more and otherwise thank you so much for watching you guys bye bye